we have the task of trying <laughs> to tell people how you play in conditions like that. I mean, I'll start with you, Nas. I mean, you've been watching the session. How would you play out there? What would you do? Well, two things you've got to say straight away. That is tough. And the moment ball dominates bat like that, it makes it very watchable for us and viewers at home and people coming in. But as a batsman, especially a fragile batting lineup like Middlesex, it makes it very tough. And the second thing we always forget, all of us, is when your brain is scrambled, when you're out of nick, it is absolutely a nightmare place to be. You're not watching, you've often said it, you've done analysis on batsmen that are out of form. You're not watching the ball. You're suddenly thinking about your head, you're off stump. People like us up on TV are saying, should you be on off stump guard? You're starting to doubt yourself. The thing you have to do, I believe, is either believe in your technique, which is what I used to do, or, as in the Middlesex coach at the moment, Stuart Law, he used to have an attitude in conditions like this, I'm going to get you before you get me. And that's not playing like Darren Stevens did yesterday, teeing off. Stewie Law used to go out there with a real positive mindset that if you're positive in attack, you will be positive in defence as well. So you do one or the other and you don't get caught between the two. One or the other, which way would you go? I think it, go, it changes, actually, for different bowlers as well. And you've got your different plans. You've got to play the ball that's coming down to you. Do your research. You look. You know that Roach is wider the crease, and he just angles it in. So you've got to play for that ball, really. So then you try and hold the line as straight as you can. But I always, always think, and it's so hard to do when you're struggling for confidence, which is what all sport is all about, confidence, of just being to have that clarity of thought, be able to watch the ball, but be positive. And that doesn't mean playing shots, like he said, like what Darren Stevens did yesterday, where he's just teeing off. It's actually th having that mindset that I'm going to keep the straight ones out as best I can, but if you give me a hint of width, I'm going for you. If you overpitch, I'm going to put it away. And then, and you've got to run hard, all of that, and then that way you're throwing just something back on the bowlers. The one thing I'd be looking for as a captain and coach is excuses. I, I hated excuses. So you've just been out in India for the test series, you did a bit out there. I'd be looking, and they were incredibly difficult conditions on those spinning pitches. As captain and coach, I'd be looking for players coming off going, well, that's just ridiculous, that's a stupid pitch, we can't bat on there. I'd be like, you're already gone before you got out. Or batsmen coming here going, lights on, green pitch, we've played at Lords all summer, it's doing everything, this is not fair. I'd be looking at that and saying, you're already out. Find a way of getting a score. Find a way of doing your job. Would you, though, as a captain or a coach, when you want to try and give your players confidence, if they are playing, like at Lords, where it's really tough, where 150 at times is a good score, will you give them that crutch? Would you actually say, look, this is tough. You still have to find a way to score runs, but don't be going there thinking you're a terrible player. Somehow you've got to give them confidence. It's not an excuse, but you're actually trying to say, look, this is hard, but you're going to have to find a way to do it. It is tough, but we just saw that little innings with Simpson there, didn't we? I mean, he lined it up absolutely perfect. It doesn't mean you go out there and get 150 or whatever. You get a score that will win your side a game or keep them in the game. Middle Six's batting lineup this season hasn't... The first couple of games, they got first innings leads, actually. Since then, and that's my point about when your form goes and your mind goes and your brain goes, that's when you have to be at your toughest mentally. That's when you have to be at your strongest mentally. Bowling is a physical game, physically demanding. Bowlers retire because their body goes. Batsmen retire because their mind goes. They are sick and tired of strapping it on, <laughs> doing all the work, and Shane Wall bones you a ball that pitches leg and it's off, <laughs> and you've done all your work, or you're coming back in conditions like this. It is mentally draining, but that's why it's supposed to be draining. That's why people come and watch. But would you agree? I mean, it's a great point you make. Would you agree that when we are in bad form, and, and Rob's right, talking about confidence, that, that drains your form, do we concentrate too much on the technical side? Do coaches talk too much yeah. about the technique and actually say, just watch the ball? Yeah, but it's so easy now, Nick. We're sitting there having a cup of tea I and agree. a coffee. <laughs> so easy to say that. You've worked in your nets two or three days. You've worked about your head position, your feet, your triggers. What you're supposed to do the moment you go out to bat is forget all that and just watch the ball. But when you're in, when you're playing really well, you do not think about anything. You're just natural and you react. When you're out of Nick and you're facing up and it's like head, feet, am I going too early? And you forget to watch the ball. You see, I think as well, practice becomes massive. When, it's, when the weather's been like it has been over the last, what, two or three weeks, and the pitches haven't been easy. You know, you have those coaches sometimes, you have play, I'm just going to have a tough net. You've got to bat through anything. No, no, sometimes you've got to offset that. So if it's tough out there, you've got to go back to trust in the ball. You might go indoors, hit through the line of a few. Don't just go out there, practice 
bit pretty tough, sorry, play it pretty tough on a tough pitch, and then you go in the nets and you're doing the same thing where you're just looking to survive, actually go where you get some trust back. You might have times where it's really flat and you need a tough net to make it up, to make keep yourself honest. So you've got to make sure you're being smart in everything you do because you somehow you've got to find confidence. It's an interesting point, actually. You know, I would go the other way. I would practice under immense pressure, make it harder, so that when you go out to bat, it would, you'd feel a little bit easier. But Rob makes an excellent point that if you're constantly putting yourself in difficult situations, you could lose all rhythm of your game. So he makes a very valid point. Sometimes just go in and smash the ball and try and get that flow of batting back. I'm trying to think, if you'd have been out there, you guys, <laughs> and you'd have been in really good form, say you got 100 in the previous game, you'd have perhaps looked a very different player playing on a surface like that Absolutely. because you'd have had the confidence of going at the ball. But it's that thing of not caring a little bit. I mean, Zach Crawley last year when he got a double hundred against um, Pakistan, then went back to Kent on a nibbling pitch again. And I remember in the first innings he got naught, almost a first baller, I think. But then in the second innings he just said, you know what, I don't care about it, I'm just going to go out there and play shots. And he got a very good hundred and changed that game for Kent because he was in a position where he had so much confidence. And you've got so many runs in the bank as well. You've scored runs for England. You don't care as much. Sometimes you can care too much. And when you're really, really struggling and you know you're desperate for a score, like Hanscom now, who's averaging, what, seven or something like that, he's captain. All he's thinking is, I, I just need a score. Give me anything. Give me 30. Give me 40. Just give me a start. And you end up trying far too hard. And that's why it's such a great game. Because often, as a batsman, the harder you try, the worse it gets. So you've got to try and find that little mental thing that works for you. It's tough that, though, isn't it? Because we all care so much. I mean, everything that goes on out there, that's your career at it stake. It is, and it's experience. And I think Ath has mentioned it on commentary there. That's when your coach looks to your senior players. And that's what Middlesex have been lacking, their senior players. Especially when the overseas pro, like Roach, is running in and bowling the way he is. Hanscom, who's averaging seven this season, then gets out to him. You really feel not only you're letting your team down, but as the overseas star, you want to be contributing. As captain, you want to be contributing. So it's a double whammy for him. Sometimes Keith Fletcher used to say to me, when I'm my 50 million times I was out in there, <laughs> Nas, it just takes a couple of boundaries to get yeah. back in Nick and you suddenly feel good again. And you suddenly think, why was I fretting so much? But you know you'll fret again in the future. It also depends a bit on who you're facing, don't you? And I know this is a point you want to, to bring up. And you've got, should we call it the county dobbers? Because we've not really got a better phrase to describe it. But the player or the bowler, really, where you, you've got about five options to play it before it arrives, rather than playing on instinct. I mean, we're seeing a lot of that now in county cricket. Well, if you look, it's what's this? From 2017 to 2021, these are the most successful bowlers. And none of them, I think the quickest one is 82.37. That's Ollie Robinson. This is their average speed. So nobody's above 83 miles per hour. Darren Stevens is right down there at 69, averaging 18 with the ball. Kyle Abbott, 18. You know, these guys are really tearing it up. And they are. I remember I played against a lot of these bowlers. And they were the nightmare. Give me Brett Lee or someone quick. And you don't mind it because you can just think, I've just got to watch the ball, otherwise I'm going to get hurt. These blokes come at you and they're nipping it around in conditions early season and you're just thinking, I'm not worried at all about getting hit in the head, which is what we used to think about. It's more, I'm just worried about my shin getting blown off. So what am I going to do? Then you go to sort of plan B. It might be batting across like some of them are doing. It might be coming out of your ground. I saw Joe Rue play against Darren Stevens, and he was that far out of his ground. So he'd gone like that. And so you're having to go to a form of batting that you don't necessarily want to do, and that plays with you mentally, and you end up with a head full of cartoons like I did all the time, and you're just seeing demons. You don't trust the ball, and it's bloody tough. I'm just thinking of the irony of your comment there. I mean, there are probably a number of club cricketers that are just waiting to get in the car and go off and play, hopefully, if the weather is fine. And they're saying, I just heard Rob Key said, I'd rather face Brett Lee <laughs> than Darren Stevens or something like that. I mean, that really is the, the nub of the discussion we're having. When you first come in, the thing you worry about is express base. So I'd have played yeah. second team under 19, Ilford, Clayhall cricket, and I'm looking, I'm at the Oval and Sylvester Clark's running in at me, and you worry about express base. Once you've played international cricket, the thing you worry about is lack of pace. Rob Key makes an excellent point. That's what does you. Marnus Labuschagne this year is an excellent example of that. Averages 60 for Test Match Cricket for Australia. Averages 7 this season. And Darren <laughs> Stevens has done him yet again with the nip backer. This is one of the great batsmen in world cricket. And Darren Stevens is making him look like Rob Key, to be honest. <laughs> have a look at the reaction here. I don't think he's happy. Look, he might just have a quiet word as well. I don't think he was happy with that decision. But either way, it's kind of summing up what you just said. Well, and that's the thing. So every 
everything that he plans and the players that I work with, obviously a couple of players or one player in particular, and you're sort of having to do two things, preparing for county cricket, which is, as NASA quite rightly says, is sort of getting on the front foot and it's below the waist, but then you're thinking about actually you're going to have a bit of pace at you at some stage when you start playing test cricket again, so then you've got to practice for that. I remember speaking to Alistair Cook when Steve had done him in 2011 when Alistair Cook had not I don't think the Aussies could get him out in that series out in Australia and we played them first game and I said to Steve you're going to bowl at Cookie and he just sort of went play miss, play miss, dropped play miss, play miss, out when the likes of Mitchell Johnson and Harris and all that lot couldn't get him out and I almost said, I said do, do you feel you need a different technique for county cricket? He said yes but you know, he had his eye on other things he couldn't do that because he had to get ready for test cricket and that's part of the problem for these young batsmen and selectors or selector now how do you judge the players to come in and do well in test cricket and the flip side of that is when they get in i know for a fact the first thing that graham thought yeah. tests them with is the short stuff because you've got here we know you can play the ball below your waist you must be averaging 40 50 but now we're going to get some chin music so the first thing thought tests them can you play the short stuff? I remember talking to Ian Bell and Jonathan Trott about the step up from Test cricket from county cricket, and they said it was as big a step going back from Test cricket to county cricket yeah. for very much the same reasons that you guys are saying, because the adjustments that you have to make are so considerable. And you become a product of your environment. So all you boys, when I watched you lot growing up, all sort of went back and across because there was a lot more pace in the game. There were overseas players in county cricket who bowled pretty quick. And then you had someone like Trotty almost came at the bowler, didn't he? His trick went forward and now you've got a lot of guys standing dead still because actually it's about 80 mile an hour so you've got to somehow put all of these things together and you've got to prepare for test cricket county cricket it's not an easy time gosh Absolutely. we've made batting sound hard I'm just there, thinking that now. there's three old pros here on the edge of the boundary making oh, out they were so tough. 100 hundreds with, not even between us anywhere near like that